Okay, what I want to share with you today is a system I designed about 15 years ago, and it's basically a um, heat exchanger. It takes the uh, heat out of the cold, hot shower water that's going down the drain and puts it into the uh, cold water that's going into the hot water tank. Um, in order to do that, I have to run uh, half inch copper piping in contact with the shower drain water. So that opens up the risk of what they would call in plumbing terms cross contamination. If somehow the uh, any any germs could get from the waste shower water into the fresh potable water piping, that could be a contamination. That's what I don't think is possible uh, because the potable water is under house pressure 50 60 psi and the shower drain water is under no psi so um, if you've ever sprung a leak in your copper piping in, in this system you would have to somehow somehow get the shower drain water into the uh, into the fresh water supply however uh, I mean I guess it's possible so I'll use at your own risk I've had my system running for 15 years. It cost me about $60 in parts and it saves me about $200 a year in hot water bills. And uh, that is about $3,000 savings for a $60 investment. So for me, I like it. It works great. Um, the copper, I'm going to clean it here today and show you. It's like the day it was put in. It's brand new. Uh, just do a good job when you assemble it. Uh, use proper soldering techniques, etc. And there's no in my opinion, no uh, cross-contamination risk. Uh, works great. Okay, so let's get at it. I'll show you how this thing works. Okay, this is my uh, shower hot water heat recovery system. Uh, cold water from the city supply. Cold water from the city supply goes in here through this heat exchanger and then comes out here into the hot water tank. Hot shower water comes in here, fills up this container, comes around through the loop at the bottom. There's the loop on the bottom. Drains out here, back into the sewer system. I'll show what it looks like on the inside. So it looks like it's a good thing I took it apart to be clean because it's in pretty bad shape. Okay, I'm back with some more supplies, a garbage bag for the junk, and I think I'm going to put on some. Uh, Disposable rubber gloves, which I should have had on in the first place. You can tell it's a pretty gucky job. Okay, so now we have the, the guts of it are pretty clean. You can see it's back to the, pretty much back to the copper. Uh, there's no degradation of the copper, it just gets this black, um, it's just a coating that forms in the copper tubes, but the copper tubes look totally fine. There's no pitting, no corrosion, no nothing, everything looks great. 
So it's in 35 feet or 25 feet of piping up and down, up and down. I did uh, eight feet up or 10 feet up here and 12 feet down here. And yeah, it's, it's kind of broken into two halves. It goes through the bottom section first, then it goes through the top section last. Then it comes out here and goes to the hot water tank. And you put them together. like so. So once again, if you follow me, ice cold water in. This is from this shower only, so there's no other dirty water in there, strictly shower water. It's passed over your body for all of about five seconds and then gone straight down to the sewer. There's no other infeed into this pipe, just this one shower. That's uh, so whenever anybody has a shower from here, hot water comes in here, the drain water comes in here, fills up the pipe, comes out here, goes back to the drain. Cold water, icy cold comes in here, pre-warmed water now comes in here, then goes to the hot water tank. In theory, the water that's leaving this pipe to go to the sewer drain should be cold. This copper pipe should extract all the heat out of the wastewater, in theory. And it works pretty good. Okay, so now we'll go install this and I'll show you how it installs. Pretty simple. <clears throat> okay, so the reason I took this uh, uh, hot water heat exchanger out in the first place is because I just put in a brand new uh, Ream high efficiency hot water tank and it's the um, heat pump heat pump model So you can see this empty space This heat exchanger that I just finished cleaning out is right here and the bottom of it Will sit on the support that I made because it gets quite heavy Right now I have it bypassed, the hot water tank, the house is running as normal. Uh, this drain piece will come out at this clamp right here and this clamp up here. So these are just your uh, rubber with a steel clamp around the outside. That's CSA approved. So this lower one goes on this lower one here and this upper one goes on this upper one up here. So I'll just take this drain out of here right now. Oh, and then also this red piece of X here goes in the big loop like this. That's to bypass where the uh, heat exchanger uh, fresh water system would normally plumb in. So right now I've just got it bypassed. The, the cold water inlet is coming here. It's doing the big loop and it's going into the hot, straight into the hot water tank, bypassing the uh, heat recycler. And uh, so I'll just take this off here. I'll show you how to do that once I get to uh, take the drain off first. So the way I did this is I turned the main house supply off <clears throat> and then I opened the kitchen faucet and that uh, released all the pressure that was uh, stored in the uh, PEX piping throughout the house. And then once the, the water stopped coming out of the kitchen faucet, I turned it back off. Then I came and turned off the cold water inlet valve to the hot water tank. So there's no pressure in the piping going into the hot water tank. And then I went and I turned the house main back on, which repressurized the house for use. So now when I disconnect this red PEX from here to hook it up to the water heat, heat exchanger, um, they won't, it won't spray all over the place. I'll just do that in a minute. And I suggest you get ready with some rags. I have a couple rags and I got this big bowl handy. I'm gonna pull off the top one first. You don't have to use a PEX tool, uh, a shark bite remover tool. You can just use a crescent wrench on there like that if you want, but this works also. And there was a little bit of spraying, hopefully not too much. Okay. I'll just empty the water out of this. Okay, so the cold line is disconnected. Next thing to do is to take this drain off. This clamp right here. 
don't know if you can see it. So I'll take these two clamps off and pull this drain pipe out and I'll show you that in a second. Okay, so I loosened the two clamps. Now I'm just going to take off this pipe, get the bowl in position because there's going to be water here. Okay, so now you can see there's that drains open and that drains open. And this piece matches exactly there and there. So it's just a bypass. It's hard to do this with one hand. So that's my bypass. I'm taking my bypass out and I'm going to install the actual unit. tricky okay so now I got the uh, heat exchanger unit in place there's the hot uh, water tank so there it is there you can see the other pipe going up beside it so there's the, the one connection point and there's the other connection point right up there next thing I'll do is hook up these two water lines to the two copper lines on top of the heat exchanger and uh, I'll show you that Okay, and what you end up with is this. So there's my stand, wooden stand, with a heat exchanger on it. I have a drain plug here. I threaded, uh, pipe threaded, and drilled and pipe threaded this black uh, five inch or six inch, whatever it is. I think it's whatever it is, PVC pipe. And I installed a screw with a sealing gasket on it. And it goes all the way up. And you saw me already hooked up this guy and the one up top there, and that one up there. I guess it's right there, hard to see. Already installed those. Now the water line, instead of coming straight into the hot water tank, it goes, takes off here, loops around, goes up, 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 and then you can see up there, right there, it goes into one of the, uh, the uh, inlet of the copper pipes into the heat exchanger, and then there's the outlet right beside it. The outlet comes down. Comes down here, comes down here, and goes right in here. Right into the hot water tank, cold water inlet. And uh, when you run it, you can just feel the cold water come in from the city, feel the temperature of this, and then feel the temperature of this. While somebody's having a shower upstairs, this will be whatever it is, city water temperature, and this will be probably 15 to 20 degrees warmer. Yeah, it makes that much difference. So your hot water tank only has to work half as hard as it normally has to work. Anyways, back to the heat heat, uh, heat recycler. Yeah, why flush all that hot water down the drain when you can suck the energy out of it and put it in your hot water tank. Over and out, bye for now.